Texas had the other day with Christian out and Zach. I mean, what are you seeing from True and uh, who you have left? Hassan's been out too, I think. Yes, yeah, so we've had we've had a few guys out. Um, you know, the good thing is we have a bunch of guys that are really willing and really capable and, and uh, highly coachable. So, like the guys that were before were like the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh guys. They've gotten a lot better, and uh, those guys really have just shown competitiveness and willingness to put themselves in with the ones and the twos and, and to, to do some pretty good stuff. And uh, you know, just guys that are really taking advantage of the opportunity to go against the Jordan Anthony and a Gill and a Glasgow and a Kalik, et cetera. So it's been, it's been fun to watch. That intrudes a starter right now? Yes, sir. How's he handled that? He's handled it well. He, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's more of a, of a role than he's ever had. And, uh, you know, gradually he's, he's eased into it. And uh, I think he's getting used to that, you know, every play type of deal. If we're in a move the ball situation and you're talking about like five, six, seven plays in a row, he only maybe did that a couple times last year. So it's a little bit different in terms of the sustained focus and the, the cardio that it takes. Uh, but he's doing a pretty good job. Where has he improved the most since last season? I'd be curious if, if you all ask him what he'd say. I, I think that he's playing a lot faster. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a guy who did a lot of work this offseason just cleaning up his, his nutrition uh, and doing a lot of extra speed work. And it's really showed up in like perimeter runs, being able to put his foot in the ground and, and get vertical and like a lot of times a run last year that might have been like a four or six yard run. Now he's running through that arm tackle and it's 10, 12, 15. So it's been fun to watch. He's had a few big plays this spring. How is, uh, <laughs> how's Ben Van Summeren doing making that move from fullback to running back? Uh, he's doing well. He's doing really well. And, and uh, you know, he's really moved uh, from linebacker actually to back to offense. So big transition and, uh, you know, he's handled it. He's handled it well. It's, uh, there's growing pains, just understanding the, the level of detail in certain plays. You know, you get to the point where, okay, I know this run's going this way, but now I got to know, hey, this is my, my landmark, this is my footwork, this is my read. So uh, he's just gradually building up on the level of detail that he can, he can handle and execute with. How does this offense change with Josh coming in? How does it affect your group? Uh, that's a great question. Um, We're still a run first team. Um, and the runs that we're running aren't really much different. Uh, I think that the way that it's presented to them is, is uh, just from a learning standpoint, I think they've taken to pretty well. Uh, so when you talk about like the transition of like a guy like Ben Van Sumeren from defense to offense or a guy who maybe was like, you know, a fourth or fifth or sixth guy elevating up, like those guys were able to learn really quickly faster probably than in the last system. That's one difference that I've seen that's benefited them. Um, other thing is like s s there's more involvement with screens and we, we've made more of an emphasis on that and guys are taking to it and understanding the detail of them and all that. So it's overall been great, but it's tough to like say, hey, this one thing is super different, if that makes sense. Um, speaking of that, with Josh coming in as a returning like offensive staff member, how does that affect you guys as coaches um, having him there? Uh, great question. It, it's kind of like we all, we all know the, the basics of, of his system because, you know, it's all – there's pieces of it that we've done mm -hmm. before. Um, but then hearing from him, a guy who's like – who knows, hey, this is this play and this is all the things defense can do to stop this play, he's, he's seen all those. And so he knows what the answers are. And, and – the direction an offense needs to go and say, hey, okay, if they're defending us like this, then the next move is like this, and this is what we should do next. And it's, uh, it's been really cool to see that. And we're learning kind of his thought process, the way he sees the game, the way he wants to attack a defense. Uh, so that, that's probably been the main thing, and it's been fun. He's been incredible to work with. So many of your guys have also you know, had been on both sides, not just Van Sumeren, but you know, True having made that switch, Lucas Andrighetto before the injury. Is there a benefit at all to that? I mean, not just the, like the whole having to come and learn a whole new side of the ball, but is there a benefit? Yeah, I think that's a great observation. It's, it certainly is a benefit. Uh, you look at guys like just starting, for instance, on the Pop Warner level, like people talk all about time and talk about like specialization in sports being a problem. But like the thing that people don't talk about is like specialization in one sport is a problem. Like playing like if you're like a point guard and you never get a chance to play off ball, 
it's a problem. And if you're in football and you're running back your whole life, there's a lot of skills that you're probably not developing in terms of understanding of leverage and tackling and blocking uh, and, and just basic defensive principles that are super helpful in pass pro, they're super helpful in special teams. So guys that have played defense leading up to, to high school and then in high school, and then you add what you just mentioned at the college level is huge because they've really now seen like a high level of detail on both sides and uh, they just have a more complete view of the game. So uh, in a long way, yes, it does help. And it's, it's kind of something that's, I think nowadays we're seeing a little bit of a dangerous path, like of guys just playing on one side of the ball, which is, it's interesting. Did you mention this week that... Uh, wow, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> was that choreographed? <laughs> Jim mentioned this week, uh, you know, mental reps are, are important for these guys, but is there any concern for you about, you know, these guys missing, who are missing time to be behind the learning curve a little bit? Is that what you were going to ask? Well, that's pretty much what I was going to ask. <laughs> that's pretty good. We work together, too, so that's <laughs> Okay, good. fair. So he stole your thunder, then. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... The, the main thing I try to stress to those guys is like being out doesn't necessarily mean you have to fall behind, you know, and it, it's a challenge for each one of these guys is can you stay engaged to the point where it's like mentally it's as if you were about to go into the next play. And it's really hard to do. Very few players can do it, but that's the standard is to see if you can stand there knowing you're not going to go in for three or four or five practices or the rest of spring and be focused as if you're about to go in. Um, if you approach it like that, you can you can mitigate some of those concerns like you're saying. If a guy is like just thinking about other stuff out there, which is like a natural reaction for a lot of guys, then you're gonna have a lot of trouble. And when they come back, then they'll have that feeling of like, oh man, like I missed too much stuff. So uh, I think it's, it's possible and we're working hard to make sure it doesn't happen. More specifically, how is Zach Charbonnet done with that? You know, being his first spring, first deal with anything here. Mm -hmm. He's done really well. He's uh, like him. CT and uh, Hassan have all maintained a high level of engagement with everything uh, in terms of learning the offense, um, really understanding details and like being able to stand back there, watch what's happening in front of them and, and track their, whoever they're blocking and protection with their eyes or, or have their eyes on the run read. Really just resist the urge to become a spectator uh, when you're out of practice and then resist the urge to like have that disengaged feeling of like, oh man, the team is moving on without me and I'm stuck back here. Like, all three of those guys have done a pretty good job of like just fighting that urge and, and staying with it. What does the timeline for those three guys look like right now? Uh, they'll, you know. they'll all be back for the season uh, without any, any restrictions or concerns. Mm -hmm. Do you expect any to be back before spring ends? Or is that... uh, possibly uh, CT and Hassan should both be. They should both be. When did you know Charbonnet was going to be out for the spring? Was that a premeditated thing? or? Expected. Yeah, okay. it was expected. Uh, it was the kind of thing that we knew for quite some time. And, um, you know, based on certain, like, just the, the expertise of doctors here and being able to do a surgery, a rehab, the post-op, everything in-house, uh, you know, it's really reassuring where you can supervise and, like, structure the entire recovery. So uh, it was the kind of thing where there's no, there's no downside. Like, either way, he's going to miss spring, most likely. And so let's do it all here and make sure everything is exactly right so that when he transitions to summer training, it's smooth and there's no more, no more concerns. When he does recover, where does he fit in the offense or how does he fit in the running back room? Uh, he fits as, like those other guys, they're all competing. Uh, True, Hassan, CT, Zach, um, uh, Capitina, Julian. I mean, all those guys are competing. And we don't have, like, we're not going to end spring knowing who's going to be uh, our, our top guy for the for sure the first game. We'll have an idea. Okay, this is where it stands. But you know, there's a lot more work to be done throughout summer, and and uh, those guys know that they're building a body of work throughout. Uh, you know, of how reliable can I be? Uh, you know, what's the strength staff opinion of me through, you know, July through June, July, and all that stuff. So it's it's a it's a marathon, and like the the sprint of of spring is important, but then it's you got to be able to sustain, you know, and that's the good thing for those guys that are out is there's not any, like, they, they, they know, okay, I can get back, and I can get back in the fight, and, and uh, I, I feel good about all of them. Got time for a couple more for Jay, if anyone has a final question you, for him. You know, Ben Mason pretty well. He worked with him last year. Love Ben. One of my top guys. Does he, does he have the mental makeup that's maybe more 
designed for defense, playing defense? Because the guys are talking about, you know, he's coming off the ball screaming and he's being Ben, I guess. Yeah, Ben, ben is like a defensive minded player. I think you're exactly right. That's like his natural, like, come out of the womb, like, <laughs> penetrating into the backfield and sacking people. Like, that's what he was born to do, like, just wreak havoc and, and smash people and all that. But, like, he really has an offensive skill set, like, more so than people would imagine. Like, he catches the ball really naturally. Uh, as a runner, he's really smooth and comfortable. It's, like, it's, it's weird. Like, it doesn't take a whole lot of, of work for him to get into a groove offensively. So, uh, I think you're right, but it's... He does have like offensive traits too. All right, we got to get Jay moving. Uh, oh, get the players in. Uh, one more. About Chris Evans. Yeah. That's one. Does he? Um, do you have any update on Chris Evans and whether he'll be uh, cleared? Uh, no update. That's not something I, I'm involved in. That we're, we're not right, involved right. with it, and so like really out of the loop on it, and it's kind of being left in the appropriate hands, and you know we're just kind of waiting to see what they decide. Okay. All right. Thank you.